This tutorial is all about the atom, the structure of the atom in particular, and the subatomic particles that make up all atoms. These are the objectives from the specification, uh, the OCR one, and the white shows that which is foundation and higher, and the purpley colour shows those parts of the specification that are higher level only. In the exam you'll be given a copy of the periodic table similar to this one so we'll also explain how you can find out various bits of information from this table to help you with your exam questions. So the periodic table shows all of the elements. An element, a substance which can't be broken down into anything simpler. All the atoms in a particular element are all identical but they're different from the atoms in other elements. Lots of people have drawn lots of pictures of atoms and they vary considerably as you can see on this slide but they do have certain things in common. They all seem to have some central uh, clump of particles with other particles seem to spin around in various orbits around the outside. Many of these that you see in books or I guess on the internet are very stylized, but they do have certain things correct. They do have this nucleus in the center. It's actually made up of protons and neutrons and they also have electrons in some kind of orbital paths around the outside. There's three what are known as subatomic particles which are called protons, neutrons and electrons. You have to know certain things about each of these. You have to know that protons have got a plus charge. Proton plus, very positive. Um, so all of those things kind of begin with uh, P. Uh, neutrons have got no charge, none. They've got nil charge. They're neutral, if you like. And electrons have got a minus charge. Um, how do we remember this? Well, it's the other one, I guess. But also, if you were to draw out the letter for uh, a, an electron or an E, it's got a negative charge in like that. Or if you draw it as a little letter, then the E has got also a negative charge in like that. Uh, the other thing about them is about their relative masses. Well, protons and neutrons both have a mass of 1, and they all have something else in common. They're both found in the nucleus. Electrons have got practically no mass they weigh about one two thousandth what the others do. In all your calculations you can take them as being zero but they actually have a mass of about 0 0.0005 compared with the relative mass of one for the protons and the neutrons. We'll start off by drawing some simple atoms, for example hydrogen. Now we'll have a central nucleus and that nucleus contains one proton and no neutrons and then there's an electron. The electron whizzes around the outside in some kind of circular orbit and I'll draw that as an X around the outside. Helium with two protons, two neutrons and two electrons again has a central nucleus this time with the two protons and the two neutrons inside and the two electrons share that same orbit around the outside of the central nucleus. So the electrons are in what's called a shell. The first shell has two electrons. The next one is lithium with three protons, four neutrons and three electrons. Again a central nucleus with three protons and four neutrons in. A shell around the outside which will carry up to a maximum of two electrons and then because that shell is very small and can only hold two we have to have a second shell drawn around the outside which takes the third electron. Beryllium with four protons, five neutrons, four electrons. Again the protons and the neutrons go in the central nucleus. The first shell has two of the electrons and is then full. The second shell as the other two electrons. It doesn't really matter whereabouts on the shells you place these X's or little circles for the electrons as long as you get them on the right, uh, right shell. 
Boron has got five protons and six neutrons in the nucleus. And then in the shells around the outside, we've got two electrons in the first shell, then that's full. And then the remaining three electrons are on the next shell. So we've got five electrons to the five protons. Now that's significant. Every element's got a different number of protons. If it's got five protons, it's boron. If it's got four, then it's beryllium, and so on and so forth. Now the number of electrons is the same as the number of protons, and that's because the protons, remember, have got one plus charge each. Now because the overall atom is neutral, there's no charge, then the number of negative electrons must be the same as the number of positive protons. So if it's got five protons, it must have five electrons. The number of neutrons is a bit more difficult in that it's not related to the number of protons and the number of electrons. We'll come to that in a moment. So how do you know the number of neutrons? Well, in an exam question, you may be given two numbers associated with the particular element. You may be given what's known as the atomic number, and the atomic number is the number of protons, and you may be also given a number which is called the mass number. Now the mass number is the total of protons added to the total of neutrons. Remember, it's only the protons and the neutrons that have got mass. They've got a relative mass of one each. Remember, we don't need to add in the electrons to work out the mass because the electrons weigh practically nothing. So all the mass of the atom is centered in the nucleus. So if we know both of those numbers, we can work out the uh, number of protons, neutrons and electrons in an atom. So if we're told that the atomic number of boron is 5 and that the mass number is 11, then from the atomic number 5, we know it's got 5 protons. We also know, because it's a neutral atom, it's got 5 electrons. Now the mass number is the protons plus the neutrons, so 5 plus the number of neutrons is 11, so the number of neutrons is 11 take away 5, which is 6. Now there is a number on the periodic table which is called the relative atomic mass, which we'll come onto on another tutorial. That's sometimes, and in this case it is, the same as the mass number, but it isn't always because of things called isotopes. Some elements have different atoms which weigh different amounts and that affects this particular relative atom atomic mass number. But in this case it is about the same. Here's an exam question. Look at the diagram. It shows a helium atom labelled. The table shows some information about the particles found in the nucleus of a helium atom. Complete the table. Well the relative mass of a proton is 1. That's also the case for a neutron. The relative charge of a proton is plus 1 but for a neutron, that's zero. And there's the answers. Don't be confused by these numbers in brackets here. That's just the mark scheme. So summarizing, we've got that the number of protons is the same as the proton number, which is called the atomic number in most cases. And because atoms are neutral, that's also the number of electrons. From a periodic table or from somewhere else, we can work out a mass number, and that's the number of protons and neutrons. So the number of neutrons is the larger number, take away the smaller number. Uh, that gives us the number of neutrons. Atoms are very, very small, and there are two figures that you need to know. They're on the syllabus about the mass and the radius of an atom. Essentially, an atom weighs around about 10 to the minus 3 of a gram, that's very small, and also has a radius of about 10 to the minus 10 of a meter. A couple of other questions, okay, what's the electrical charge on a proton? Choose from this list, well it's positive because it's got a plus charge. An oxygen atom is neutral, explain why? talking about the number of protons and electrons, uh, it's electrically neutral because the number of protons plus charges is 
equal to the number of electrons which are minus charges. On the mark scheme here you can see you just have to say that it's got the same number of electrons and protons. It says ignore references to charges. That doesn't mean it's wrong, but you don't get anything about the charges. You've got to say that there are the same number of electrons and protons. And this question is also about atomic structure. Look at the table. It shows some information about the particles which make up atoms. Protons, again, what kind of charge do they have? Protons per, per, plus or positive. And the relative mass of a neutron is the same as a proton, it weighs 1. Here we learn about uh, magnesium. The mass number of magnesium is 24. What's meant by that? That is the number of protons added to the number of neutrons. Next part we haven't covered yet but I'll do it anyway. Write down the electronic structure of magnesium. Well magnesium has got 12 protons so it's also got 12 electrons because it's a neutral atom and those 12 electrons are going to be arranged 2 in the first shell then 8 in the next which is then full and then 2 on the outer shell and a magnesium atom is electrically neutral. Why? Because it has the same number of protons as electrons. Or the number of protons and electrons is equal. And there's our answers. Protons are positive. Neutrons uh, have got a mass of 1. Number of protons and neutrons in an atom is the mass number. The arrangement was 282, or you could draw that with a correctly drawn diagram. And it's neutral because it's got the same number of protons as electrons.